it can seem very tempting to look at everything and go, I want a bit of Tesla, yeah. I want a bit of Amazon, I want a bit of Microsoft, I want a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. You want to be careful. Not every single company will make it through this season of, you know, a huge recession as expected down the line. Hey guys, so major stock markets are crashing significantly at the time of making this video, driven by high inflation. That high inflation is connected to uncertainty around life post-pandemic, among many other things. The other key factor, interest rates rising rapidly. We're seeing rates rising in the US, in the UK, across Europe. There are significant rate rises happening at the moment and more rate rises is expected in the very near future. Everyone from the Fed to the Bank of England to the Swiss authorities have increased rates recently and all roads point to recessions down the road. In fact, as a time of making this video, we've seen the S&P 500 fall by 23.39% from its all-time high earlier this year in January, introducing what's become officially known as a bear market. That's right. And today we want to talk to you about what all of that means mm -hmm. and what you should be doing as an investor. If you're new to this channel, I'm Mary. I'm Ken. Of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. And what we do on this channel is to help you take control, grow your money and work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy. All right, guys, let's dive straight in. Okay, so as Ken mentioned previously, stock markets continue to fall. And whether you're looking at the UK, US, Europe or globally, there is generally a downwards trend. This is causing a huge panic with mm -hmm. people asking themselves questions like should I be selling everything I own mm -hmm. before we get into all of that let's just get through some definitions cool so what is a bear market I'm gonna put this up on the screen for you to see according to Investopedia a bear market is when a market experiences prolonged price declines it typically describes a condition in which security prices fall 20% or more from recent highs amid widespread pessimism and negative investor sentiment. From an, the all-time high in January 2022, you can see up on the chart on the screen, the S&P 500 has fallen 23.39% so far. And we're using the S&P 500 for the purposes of this video because it's uh, a super popular index and many people who watch our channel obviously invest their money uh, in the US equities market. And it's usually a good indicator for what's happening more generally when it comes to the stock market. But looking at that, you know, you can see that big drop uh, of the S&P 500, which is, you know, quite quite astonishing when you think about it. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of this obviously tied to uh, a lot of fear we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. But, you know, although we're looking at this over the last few months from that all-time high, it's important to look at the S&P 500 before that time. So let's look over the last one year, which you can see uh, up on the screen. You can see there that over the last one year, the S&P 500 uh, has fallen 13.02%. Let's take a look at Apple, for mm -hmm. example. Their share price has fallen by 27.72%. Microsoft, they have fallen by 26.02%. Mm. Amazon, their share price has fallen by 37.66%. Mm. Big. That's huge. It is huge. But now let's look at Meta. Their share price has fallen by a drastic 51.63%. Hmm. That is huge. And then you've got the likes of Tesla. Popular, popular stock, that one. Yep. Yeah. Their share price has also fallen quite dramatically by 45.80%. Wow. And then you have Berkshire Hathaway, which is owned by Warren Buffett. You'd be surprised, or maybe not surprised, to see that their share price has fallen by 10.87%, which is not much, but it's still an indication that things are going down. But the point there, really, the point of view reading out all these, really, is to say that the majority of the falls have been because of tech stocks that have fallen. Yes. And Berkshire Hathaway is not a, is not a tech company. No. But the whole point of us mentioning that one in the list is simply to indicate mm -hmm. that the S&P 500, for the people watching who might not know this, because we don't want to assume, is made up of various companies, mm -hmm. of which some will have massive falls and some might not have such big falls. Exactly. Right? So, for example, yeah. like utility companies. and The and, and, basic yeah, essentials. Is, exactly. Yeah. Uh, they might not have falls uh, uh, quite as drastic. Mm -hmm. And then overall, across that index is then what's reflected 
in the percentage we've, we talked about earlier, that's 23.39%. Uh, absolutely. Now, even with all these falls, it's actually worth looking at the S&P 500 over a much broader period of time, okay? Just for full perspective, because we can get dragged into you know, a very now. short period of time. So yeah. looking over the last five years, we'll put this up on the screen again, you can see that the S&P 500, even with the falls more recently mm -hmm. factored in, yeah. has actually increased by 50.71%, okay? Which is actually pretty significant. And when you go, even and look at uh, almost the, uh, a maximum period that I can look at on Google Finance, mm -hmm. we can see here that the S&P 500 has increased by 3,267.09% mm -hmm. over that period. Again, this is speaking to us as long-term long investors yeah. and the need for us not to just look at our investing as just here and now, but mm -hmm. you know, thinking a, a lot long further term. into the future. Now, in addition to that, you know, we kept playing around with this when we were looking at these charts and, you know, thinking to ourselves, you know, what a difference it makes where you actually invest your money. Yeah. Because when we look here, again, up on the screen, is comparison of the S&P 500 to uh, our local FTSE 100. It was actually really interesting to see, you know, how those have performed over the last five years. The FTSE 100 here showing a decline, if you invested five years ago, a decline of 4.84% compared to right now. And the S&P 500, as I mentioned earlier, showing an increase of 50 Point seven one percent. So, you know, with wow. all these, yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> quite a big difference. But with all these things we're mentioning now, you know, it can seem like, wow, you know, it's very, it might seem like doom and gloom, crashes, you know, what should you do right now if you are an investor? If you already invest in the stock market or if you're a beginner investor, yeah. what should you be doing right now? Looking at history, if we just look at the last decade, it has mm. been historically about low interest rates. Yeah. And so a lot of people have never experienced huge crashes. I mean, yeah. just look at during the pandemic, yeah. a lot of people have only just started their investment journey yeah. in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so this is all very much new to them. This and whole, scary, and, isn't it? And very scary, understandably. Mm. Yeah, so I'd say the very first tip we would offer here is don't panic. And we know this is easier said than done. Yeah, because you're looking at your phone, you're looking at your app, I know. possibly every day or every week, and you're mm. seeing your investments completely decline in value. The thing to note is that those losses are not real losses yet. Mm. They only become real losses as soon as you hit that sell button and crystallize that sell. That's when you actually recognize that loss. So for the minute, they are uh, almost think of them as pending losses that haven't happened. And obviously the stock market could over time change and could begin to work again in your favor. So in the interest of your mental health and your well-being, please stop checking your phone every single week. Literally, like put your phone away. You might even go and delete the app yeah. of your, inv your investing app from your phone. Literally just delete it. Yeah. So that way you can spend your time doing something much more worthwhile mm -hmm. that might even make you some extra money for you to make further investments in the future. So what's our next tip? Don't sell anything. We expect things to get worse before mm. they recover just because of the fact that interest rates are still rising. Yes. So buckle up guys. Mm. All previous bear markets have recovered yeah. eventually, mm -hmm. but it does take a while. They say that the average recovery time is 359 days, so about a year. And we'd go as far as saying, assume it will take even longer. So yeah. in that time guys, we would say, don't sell anything, just don't sell. Don't do it. All right, so our next tip is do invest in cheaper assets, okay? Things falling in value, this presents a humongous opportunity for some people to build wealth. You know, it can seem very tempting to look at everything and go, I want a bit of Tesla, yeah. I want a bit of Amazon, I want a bit of Microsoft, I want a bit of everything. Yeah. You wanna be careful. Not every single company will make it through this mm -hmm. season of, you know, a huge recession as expected down the line. So we would say, rather than actually going out there and picking individual stocks, it would be quite sensible to, why not buy the entire index if you can? You know, we've shown you there's been quite a significant decline in the S&P 500 in a bear market right now. Yeah. You know, if you do have cash, you know, obviously we know it's a difficult time with the cost of living crisis. If you do have available funds, then our suggestion is uh, don't buy individual stocks if you can avoid it. Mm. Do try and buy the index itself and hold it for the long term because over the next few decades, those decisions you're making today will definitely contribute massively to your wealth potential in the future. 
in terms of how you do it, we'd, we'd also suggest drip feeding, you know, gradually. Don't kind of just dive in there and, and just do it. Just drip feed over time because, you know, as Mary mentioned earlier, there's still quite a while to go uh, when it comes to the declines in the market. Time in the market will work in your favor. So, yeah. you know, don't bother trying to stop your direct debits, provided you're okay in terms of your, your personal finances and you're still able to budget and invest that money, we'd suggest continuing to invest on a consistent basis. Don't invest everything. There is a temptation to want to overcapitalize on what's going on and invest all your cash in the stock market. Cash is king in this season. So we'd suggest that you leave some cash behind as a safety margin in case things get even more ugly. See this as your sanity money and we'd suggest having about three to six months worth of living expenses. All right, and the final tip is for you to consider other assets. If you do want income, do you want it to come from the stock market or do you want it to come from other assets like property, for example? It's easy for us to, by default, see the stock market as where we need to put all our money. So what you need to do, and this is why we can't give generic guidance here, you need to really think about your own asset allocation. So if you've got a lot of money in stocks, then you might want to consider putting money towards other assets like property, for example. Uh, but even with putting money into property, you need to be really, really careful as well because you know we're going into a season of a recession down the line, interest rates are going up, and obviously investing in property is all to do with having a hybrid of debt and equity. So if you're borrowing money for your property, chances are mortgages obviously are going up in, in costs of borrowing, which means you need to also think of the business case for investing in property and so on. If, however, you do think, well, actually, I don't have enough of an exposure to the stock market and I'd like to invest more of my money into the stock market, this is actually a pretty good time to go about making that investment, as we mentioned earlier. But the key point here is do you have the assessment? Pause for a moment. Don't be in a rush. Really pause for a moment and ask yourself, what do I want my money doing for me in the future? Mm -hmm. And what decision should I make today in order to be able to achieve that outcome. So guys, we'd love to hear from you. Are you investing in the stock market for the long term as markets fall? Or are you holding off and not investing your money at mm. all? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to jump in there and have a conversation. And guys, if you made it to the end, would absolutely love if you show us support, hit the like button, share this with somebody who you think will enjoy this video and also subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as ever, in, in all things, things, be thankful and seek joy. Take, Take care, care guys. Bye. Bye.